Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage podcast. You're joining me, Bella Rose, as I dive deep into the beauty, power, and truths about intimacy. Learn not only the practicals, but the heart behind what making love is all about. Delight your marriage. Hi there, welcome. It's Bella. I'm grateful that you are here. Today's episode is inspiring and encouraging. And if you have felt stuck, if you're a man or a woman, I just really encourage you to listen into Chris's story. As a man who has been in the church for a very long time and really has um, been scratching his head for a really long time, how do I change as a man? How do I become who God wants me to be? Um, How do I transform? It's really powerful what Chris talks about. So I just want you to listen in, be inspired, be encouraged. And if you, like him, have felt stuck or feel stuck now, I just encourage you to go to delightyourmarriage.com slash cc. And that's the first step of healing of your marriage. And like Chris talks about, I mean, this is about discipleship. This is about becoming the man God wants you to become. And it's not a weekend retreat. Those are great. Um, They are. But it's not effective if it doesn't affect your day to day to day. If it doesn't change what you do today and what you do tomorrow and what you are the next day. Um, Yeah, so God is doing amazing things. I want you to be inspired. Um, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be unstuck like Chris. All right, let's jump in uh, to his story. Chris, my goodness, what a joy it is. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. I've been looking forward to being here and uh, it's been a while, although it seems to have gone very quickly. (laughs) It has. I know. I know. Well, maybe we could just start off. Would you mind introducing yourself and a little bit about you? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm uh, Chris. That's not my real name, but that's what we're going to call me today. Uh, I am a, I was a teacher for a long time. I'm semi-retired. Um, so, and I wanted to do this course as a kind of springboard into retirement to get my marriage, my discipleship my my uh position with god right my relationship with god right and uh see what he has in the future i felt stuck before and um uh so yeah i've got a couple of girls a couple of grandchildren and a wife oh that's and wonderful in and you're most in england the, yes most of the group <laughs> seem to be american or but it doesn't matter because we can all talk to each <laughs> other as long as the time zones work out <laughs> yeah yeah, that's awesome. Wonderful, Chris. Well, how uh, how did you hear about Delight Your Marriage? What's kind of the trick been that way? Um, I w- I've been interested in in improving marriage for a long time and found your podcast, listened for probably, we were talking about this a while ago, weren't we? Four or five years, maybe. I did the, and and I just loved it. I was in a, doing a driving job at the time and um, uh would listen in between drops i could listen to loads and loads of of podcasts i listened to some others as well but this was the best of course um and uh then i did the free well i call it the nighttime course because it, it was in the middle of the night uh what was it called <laughs> what do you call it oh goodness we've done a lot it might have been a master class yeah the master class or... okay. i did that twice over oh. a period of about two years and um I don't know. I don't like spending money. So, and I didn't have a lot of money. So I was reluctant to do the whole thing and thought, no, I can change my life in three months. No problem at all. Don't need anybody else. I just keep listening. And actually you really need the focus of being there and being, having other people around you to nudge you and all the things that we do. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, and so then what made you end up deciding to go forward with it. Um, you said you were kind of finally had the time. Money. <laughs> I, 
I got a pot of money and semi-retired. So I had, I knew I'd have time and the, a window, a window of opportunity. So I talked to Dana, I don't know, I think it was a year ago, actually. And then we, because I was, I really wanted a clarity call, really. And it was helpful to understand where I was. Um, but I just couldn't commit to doing it at the time in terms of the amount of time I'd have or in terms of the money. And I knew that this window of opportunity uh, would would come up starting in what may 2023 um and it did and it just felt like the my my as i say springboard or the door into my retirement or semi-retirement to see which is not going to be retirement at all because i'm going to be doing all sorts of things but i'd like god to be in charge really amen amen wow okay so you had the call came back around a year later um, decided this was, this is what you felt God was saying was now the time. Um, and then, yeah. What was it like getting into the program? Um, I, I just think that I keep saying it, but I think the teaching is genius. It's just extraordinary. I, I thought that at the beginning, I think that now I've been through the course, um, I, it's, just brilliant that the 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 idea that uh, my wife needs to feel safe known and wholeheartedly cherished that we've unwrapped and developed and found worked out more about is has just I've, i mean i've just never heard it before i i don't know where you got it from <laughs> i don't know whether it was downloaded from god or you know i don't know what your secret is whether you, you know whether there's a whole there's other people that you're in league with not in league with that's what I'm <laughs> saying it, but cooperating with who are have similar philosophies or ways of of uh uh looking at marriage and masculinity if you like um but it's i just couldn't resist it i couldn't couldn't keep away really it just looked incredible and it has been not quite the way i expected perhaps but you don't get that with god do you 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 follow God and you end up somewhere really good, but not maybe exactly where you thought you'd be. Mm, mm. Oh, that's a, that's a great way to say it. Isn't that true? I think one of the Amen. things as well is about, I've been, I've been wanting to find, I've been a Christian for a long time, like 45 years or something. And I've wanted to know how do I change? How can, how can I be transformed? You know, Romans 12 says, by the be transformed by the renewing of your mind um but how do you do that and it needs something where you're going to have to pay because it's got to be quality teaching and time which costs money um and you've got it and you've you've i know you've tweaked it and you've changed things around i think i've come in at a really good time by the sound of it um <laughs> I'm sure other people would have benefited before, but and it'll be even better in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just the the teaching, the groups, the, the even the groups where there's nobody from DYM in, where we're just left on our own, which I didn't realise was going to happen. I was waiting. <laughs> I I just thought the facilitator couldn't make it one week. <laughs> and so someone took over. I didn't quite get that bit, that that memo. <laughs> um, but even that was genius because it meant we had to grow up and and actually take a responsibility and grow together. And that growing together, I think in the very first session we had, I realized this isn't about me. <laughs> I said to you, I think. And it's not about me. I it was I I felt a little bit put out because it was uh I was right at the, the end of the, the list, if you like, and not really mentioned much. And I thought, hang on, this is, I've been listening to these gentlemen learning, discovering God's plan for their lives and how to love their wives better. And um, I can learn from that as well. And it's, so that just humbled me a little bit. I thought it's not about me, which is a good lesson. Yay. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. 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 Uh, what was surprising in, in the midst? You, you shared a couple of them. Um, any other surprises? Um, they were, 
surprises for me. So before I came in, I had the words from Isaiah 43, which say, see, I'm doing a new thing among you. Do you not perceive it? And those are quote, those words are quoted a lot and that God is doing a new thing in my churches I'm involved in. Um, I'm doing a new thing. Oh, great. Good. That's nice. Uh, you know, we heard that last year and the year before and the year before. Um, and then, but then it says, do you not perceive it? And I just took that to mean you can miss it and um, beware that you don't miss it. And there was one particular session <laughs> where I was sitting here in this park um, talking to you and Kyle and the group. And, um, and I just talked about a few things. And Kyle said, that is God. I one thing was, well, it was one thing was Ephesians. I'll tell you, Ephesians has blown my mind even more than since I saw you last. Um, the bits of Ephesians that are in between the apostles and prophets, pastors and teachers, in between the, you know, the two big prayers and the, you know, the armor of God that we do in Sunday school and do in England anyway. Um, and the bit of even the bit about loving your wives and how you, how husbands and wives should behave, the bit saying um, be completely humble and gentle, and the two prayers certainly, and um, just all sorts, just just beautiful, extraordinary things in there that I just think, wow, we can be rooted and established in Christ, you know, and He's right here with us. We can be completely attached connected to him just extraordinary um so i think i so, so i had slightly misunderstood that verse that it was directly for me and I, I think i only realized that today god was being a bit sneaky so you know show me that verse and, and i thought ah, i know what that's about and um and he said no you don't <laughs> and you said go away and think about this and uh, and i did and and it's just been it's been marinating in it, I suppose, and uh, just letting it soak in that God is here. Um, I, well, I suppose, I don't know what's been surprising, but one other thing is the power of, of I was going to say positivity, but the power of gratitudes, the power of thankfulness. And um, one of the tasks you've given us every single blooming day we have to do it every day Bella is to write 10 gratitudes including three about our wives but the thing that and, and it has to be from the heart you have to mean it as well you can't just scribble it down and um the thing that really really struck me is that you said one day sometimes I something like I'll, I'll misquote you but sometimes I start the day in such a bad mood that I have to do 50 <laughs> it wasn't a bad mood i'm i'm putting words into your mouth but no it's but true you, it's true but you can get to that that place and that was me today i was feeling really grumpy i thought oh no i've got to do this call I've got to do this <laughs> interview that's saying how much i've changed and nothing is you know how much i love the course and it, it, i just felt absolutely rubbish and i did some gratitudes i went for a run and going oh. for a run is, is good actually because there's no distractions really and you've just got it's just you and god and um so yeah that was that was good but tr but gratitude and also when i was doing the um tell me to shut up if you want to move on but, um <laughs> when i was doing the clarity call with dana mm. there was something about expectancy um and faith i suppose that I'd never come across this kind of connecting with God and saying, well, how much do you want to change? How much do you want God? And I thought, well, I do. Just the, I just want him to show up. Where is he? Mm -hmm. And I think it was, I only realized today, I think we, I quite like this expression. We have to meet him halfway. So we come with our gratitudes and with our faith and expectation. Mm -hmm. And he says, ah, that, there you are. Right. That's that's what I want. You've got to know I love you. You've got to know that I'm for you. You've got to yes. know that you matter. You've got a future. And I that's that's yes. been quite, quite important, and quite helpful to me, I think. That's so good, Chris. I I remember talking through different um, different topics like this throughout 
throughout the course with you, I remember you saying, I mean, that's, that's just exactly right. That's just exactly right. Instead of getting to a place where we so easily can get to of, um, you know, oh God, why haven't you da, 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 instead of like, wait a second, he's given us, he's given us this. And if we can believe in the word, um, mm. why then yes, we can encounter the real God and, and we, we do have to, we do have to do our work. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So good. What a brilliant concept. Um, what else? Uh, let's see what somebody listening who maybe has listened to the podcast or seen different testimonials or, or what have you, and they have, um, maybe been a little bit like you over, over the years of just, well, I'm, I can just, you know, implement based on what I've learned and, um, you know, do you have any thoughts for a gentleman who might be listening like that? You need to find a way of, of finding the time, finding the money, whatever it need, it means. If you're wanting to change, unless you're in a church where they already do this, unless you've got a discipleship program that, where you are there for each other week after week, where you have teaching that is transformative that is changing you I, I i've always been told that transformation and sanctification if you like takes a lifetime you, you don't notice it as it's happening hmm. it just it just happens as you pray and read the bible hmm. um and that's fine but the i don't know the, the program to over a period of 12 weeks or 13 weeks to we had 14, actually, because you didn't have a session on July the 4th. That's great. Um, <laughs> that program is is genius. And I'd really recommend it. And it may not be for everyone, but if you, you, want, you need to be teachable. You need to be prepared to change. You need to be prepared to be humble, to be exposed in front of other people. And, and also, I th I'd really encourage people to want to know other people's stories and, you know, be involved in their lives because I think that that's been I've really enjoyed that mm, mm. oh that's so good have you seen um changes in you you're welcome to speak to your life or changes in other people's stories that um just kind of speak of the transformation people um might see in their own lives if they were to do the course um yeah, I think, I mean, lots of people, a, a good number of people's um, marriages have changed dramatically, qu quite quickly. Some of them quite quickly. Some of them, um, it's taken a bit longer. And others don't seem to, I don't know. I, I think everybody, it's interesting. There was a new gentleman in, who came into our group fairly recently and I just knew he, he was quite hesitant quite shy and just you know kind of just doing the program doing what he's meant to be doing and I just knew, I just thought I know in two weeks time three weeks time you are going to be um well with the accountability group leading the group so I I gave him the job of I, I said mm -hmm. you need to lead the group next week when I've gone because mm -hmm. you have people of all different levels in those groups. That's another really brilliant part of the groups, although they're always coming and going. So, you know, you lose people. Um, but and he did. And he, he started to change. And you just realize and everyone says, you know, follow the mm -hmm. program, be mm -hmm. believe God. And but it really works. And if you don't and if you and I haven't been brilliant at doing all the um living the principal sheets every week because I kind of I don't do detail terribly well I think and I, I need no I need to focus on that especially after Kyle's word the other day um, <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's been people have changed and in all sorts of different ways I think um and if you're committed as it was underlined very, very strongly at the beginning, <laughs> you need to follow this. You need to make the time to, to do the program and to trust God. Um, mm -hmm. then, then things will change. I think the, po the point about it all is that um, if 
you change the way you are and listen, look at how your wife reacts, then your marriage will change. Mm. But you'll also be the kind of person that your wife would want to be married to. Mm. Um, so, That's yeah. Right. But it's, I mean, some people have, some changes have been extraordinary. Uh, some of the advice you've given to people has been shocking at times but you've seen and tough at times but you've seen people going through the program and you know what works and you know what needs to be done um mm. and you acknowledge that it's tough as well yeah but, it is tough do you do you remember it sounds like you had a particular situation in mind when you said shocking <laughs> what's a yeah, situation I mean, I that think, you're thinking of yeah, mm -hmm. somebody who was uh, his wife was saying he she was going to file for the divorce. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, and you said you need to go and apologize to her. <laughs> mm. I thought, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she was doing controlling the money, and she was, and you said, yeah, just go and say sorry, go and apologize for for your part. Mm -hmm. You need to take responsibility. Full stop. Or period, right. as you would say in America, you need mm -hmm. to take responsibility. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and people have discovered playfulness that they mm. and tried being playful before. What else wait, wait, wait! I need to hear the rest of the story. I know the rest of the story, but I think those listening oh, after I mean, it gave him quite a talking to what? What? How, sorry, how oh, did well, it worked. play out? Let, let's say it worked. Um, <laughs> What oh, I don't know is the, is what happened, you know, what happened in the in the following months because they oh, still. Oh, did got you not? Work. Did you leave before the the? Uh, oh, then no, I'll no, get no, the end of the story. <laughs> did you? So yeah, you haven't I, heard? Uh, you didn't know the following miracles. Okay. Well, what happened is, um, yeah, they're fully in love again, fully connected in the same bed again. She yeah. is trusting him. They have. Their, their children are in a unified family, no yeah. threat of divorce any longer. Excellent. Yeah. And that was yeah. A, very, and... a very moving experience to, to see that happening and mm. to see other couples getting closer together and men taking responsibility and just mm. learning what their place in the family was. Mm. Mm. I interrupted you, though. You were talking about playfulness. Did you want to go into that a little more? I, I was just going to say some people were, well, some of the people, this, this same chap I was talking about just now, it was, I think would have said he was quite um, serious, I suppose, in life and started to discover playfulness. And because so as well as meeting in groups, we're also on social media, on Slack, the Slack channels, and people put in lists of, you know, how I'm being playful with my wife, ways I've, I've, dated things we've done on date nights um uh, and things like that which has been really helpful um and all sorts of people put all sorts of things there um but you yeah each of the modules we do each week has a different aspect um and some people you know find that their apologize apologizing is very powerful and makes a real difference other people discover that listening they learn to listen for the first time properly other people are surprised that they didn't listen when they thought they did <laughs> um, and it's just it's a, a dynamic um extraordinary extraordinary experience really and it's I, I mean i think it's what church should be like or there should be something like that in every church and it's a little bit frustrating that it's taken 60 years or so to to find this teaching um but it's been brilliant I, you see, I think uh, it's a discipleship course. Okay, it's focused on marriage. This is about how to be a man, how to be a man like Jesus. Um, there's a, some, I talked about the verses in Ephesians. It talks about in Ephesians 3 about being, um, that they might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. God wants us to be full of Jesus, full, completely. Jesus died so we could be at, just like he was. He became nothing so we could become 
a son of God, sons of God. And we've got, that's an immense calling. Um, I've forgotten the question now. What was I saying? Um, yeah, we were talking about uh, discipleship, but you said this is a discipleship course. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I came into this course feeling stuck. I didn't know what to do next. I was, I was reasonably happy, um, but I didn't know how. And I thought I need to change. I, I can't go on being the person I am. Um, how do I change? I, and I didn't know how to change. And I do now. I think that's that's what I'd say. I'm not stuck anymore. If you want a title for this, it's not stuck anymore or something. I, I don't know. Um, but it's I. I I, I want to, one of the things you did a life vision statement. We did a life vision statement. One of the things I want to do is to encourage men in church who are bored, I think, who are, you know, watching TV, going out, doing whatever they do. But I think God's got a lot more for us. I think we've, we can have a much higher expectation. And, um, that our lives can be more. I, <laughs> during the course, I mean, this has happened before, but it's kind of, kind of been more focused now, having realised, having realised that when I see something or hear something I think is from God, instead of just thinking, well, that's just words. I want a relationship. I'm now thinking that's that's God speaking to me. That's my Father speaking to me. And I saw a woman walking just over there the other day, <laughs> just down that road, with a bag that said, expect more. And we've got some, I don't know, some shop that has that as its, its logo. And I'd, see, I'd, had a, I'd seen it years and years and years ago. And it just reminded me that that was God's, my daddy speaking to me about, I've got more for you, Chris. I've got more, um, more for you to do, more for you to discover. And life's an adventure. I, I think, I don't know. I mean, I would, I think I would say if your marriage, I mean, I'd encourage this, this for anybody who's married. If your marriage is on the rocks, this will, and you really want to, to solve, solve it and sort it out and sort yourself out, work on yourself, then this is the way to do it. Spend the money, book up, take time off work, do whatever you need to do um, and do the course because you can change. The, the, the keys to and the tools for changing are here to try and being transformed. That's amazing. Would you be willing to pray for someone who may be listening, who's struggling for hope? Yeah. Do you mind if I pray out to that one of those prayers in Ephesians? Please. Yes. Just, just love it. So father, I pray that out of your glorious riches, you would strengthen this gentleman and his wife with mm. power through your spirit in their inner being so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love, they would have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that they might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Mm. And I do pray that you would show this man what he needs to do next to love his wife well. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Chris, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, um, oh, one, one thing before I stop recording is um, you mentioned that there's uh, guys that come in and come out. The good news is you're going to see all of them pretty soon in the graduate program. Yes, so you yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I realize I've only had one grad session, but it's gra- this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, and, awesome. and, and I said before, but and, until and unless something like this happens in my church, I don't see any reason for why I'd want to leave the grad group, really. It's an extraordinary place to be, keeping each other on, on track and uh, loving each other. You know, honestly, I just, first of all, thank you so much, Chris. I'm so honored and grateful. Um, and he's not wrong. These these communities are full of miracles. It's it's amazing. The men's side, the women's side, 
Uh, they're separated on purpose because men have certain things they need to process and, and be open about. I mean, completely open about. And so do the women. It's different, and they each need their side to really um, get to a place of healing um, and transformation. So, oh my gosh, thank you, Chris. This is just amazing. And seeing you day by day by day and the the fact that we've been in uh, communication for years. You know, I've seen every now and then a, a, a note here in the inbox, a note there, and it's just been such a delight to now see you in the in the grad groups thriving and praise the lord it's it's truly astounding so uh yeah dear listener thanks for joining us i hope this is encouraging to you now's the time now's the time what if what if this christmas was the best christmas you have ever had as a couple so actually i guess it was two years ago that i said something like that on the podcast um, and it was somewhere around October, I think. And to say that, what if by Christmas your marriage is the best it's ever been? And it turns out there was a pastor that signed up right around that time. And he wrote after completing the program that he was shocked. Um, so I, I found, I pulled up some of the things he said, but he said, uh, um, basically what were uh, some some things that you grew in uh, through the program. And he said, this is hard to quantify. I'm a pastor and have been in full-time ministry for 22 years. I've never ever felt like I could share a marriage message or sermon because I've never felt like it was an area I personally had much success in experiencing God's will in. Over the last 19 years, I've had seasons of struggling with anger. I've hurt my wife with words often. But in these last eight or nine years, I realized that trying to talk about intimacy wasn't helpful. So we just didn't. And the silence on that topic has been painful. I think I've also mo uh, struggled with motivation in my work because my marriage wasn't a source of life-giving energy, but often felt like more work or a drain on energy because we just couldn't get things going in the right direction. And so what celebrations, he says, oh my word, where do I start? For the first time in my married life, maybe the first time in my whole life, I have consistently shared encouraging words and compliments on a consistent weekly basis for several months. That's huge. I'm growing consistently to look for the best in all things. I've also gotten over myself and decided to try being playful. It's still very hard, painful sometimes, but it's getting a tiny bit easier. Um, he said, both my six kids and my wife have seemed to breathe deeper and more freely. I've learned a lot about the right order to things. I didn't realize the pain I brought my wife. Um, I can honestly say that my marriage, including our intimacy, has never, ever been better. There is deep emotional connection, sincere appreciation, and intense passion in our relationship that has been missing for all these years. I could not be more thrilled with where we are at. I still have hoped for continued growth, but of no pressure or expectations. I could probably fill a journal with the celebrations I experienced in the program. By far, the biggest celebrations have been what God has done in my heart. I look at life with a joy and gratefulness that hasn't been so consistent. I have more energy for all of life. I've never been more crazy in love with my wife than I am today. And I have never been more unashamed to say that out loud to her or other people. He says, our intimacy has never been better. Our times of making love are passionate, tender, emotional, and spiritual. We're growing to be expressive of what we enjoy. And just last week, actually, talked specifically about what I enjoyed. And my wife actually asked me to tell her more about it. That has never happened in our married life. And these are just last week's celebrations. I could probably write a paragraph length description for each week. So I am just so encouraged by what Chris shared, um, but maybe this is what you want as well. And this particular pastor said when Bella had that thing about, uh, I can't seem to find the quote, but have the best marriage ever by Christmas. And this is what happened after three months. 
even though he's had 19 years of struggle. So I just want to encourage you. There's hope for you, but you actually do have to, like Chris said, you have to make the choice to, to go for it. Um, the proof is here. The evidence is here. Um, yeah. So I just invite you get on the phone with us and find out what are your obstacles? What are the things that are holding you back from transformation? Because it, it can, it impacts everything as Chris talks about. Would love to have you delightyourmarriage.com slash CC. Um, now's the time. Have an amazing Christmas. That's usually when people struggle the most. November, Thanksgiving time, and Christmas time. Now's your chance. All right. God bless you. Delightyourmarriage.com slash CC. And I will talk to you next week. <laughs>